So we like to go into news, current events about Bible prophecy, so that you have in mind just what's going on uh, in the world and around you. Um, Because I know for a lot of us, we like to just go into the Sabbath and be disconnected from the world and and try to have some level of peace in in a world gone mad. But at the same time, we have to understand the, the, the times that we're living in and to always be aware that this is the day that the enemy will attack because they understand this. They understand that we're gathered together. So that this is the time that they've always attacked uh, the children of Israel is on our on our, our Sabbath day. All right. So going into the uh, the news and current events, uh Since we last had a broadcast, just kind of some things that have taken place um, before we actually go into the uh, the news articles, I would say probably the biggest thing that's happened um, that probably a lot of people are talking about when I say a lot of people, meaning the world, not necessarily anything major as far as we're concerned, but um, you had the the passing of the uh, singer artist name uh, known as Prince. And, um, of course, when any time a big, you know, status celebrity like that passes, you're going to have a lot of people, you know, go into that spirit of that artist, the music they played and all of those type of things. So um, that was one of the biggest things that, that, that happened. And, of course, the last broadcast we did, if I'm not mistaken, or one of the last broadcasts we did, we spoke about the the uh, – the, the blood sacrifice ritual burning off uh, burning sacrifice time of Beltane, which started April 19th and went uh, goes all the way to May 1st. So to see that Prince passed during this time period is not a shock for us, knowing that you know this is their their time of of major sacrifice. So um, you usually see you know these high 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 profile celebrities, you know, um, you know, die during this time. And of course, we understand that uh, majority of times when this happens, that this isn't a coincidence or just some fluke situation where he just got sick and died, but but an actual sacrifice. Um, and you don't need to look any further than go to uh, Family Guy or The Simpsons, and nine times out of ten, they're going to show you years ago a episode of this, these particular celebrities getting killed. And, uh, in 2008, they had the, uh, Simpsons show where, uh, the, uh, actual music execs came to Homer Simpson and told them that, you know, these entertainers and stars that don't fall in line with their agenda that they have to kill and get rid of. And so they asked Homer to go and kill Prince and get rid of him. So uh, they actually showed, you know, this happening to Prince back in 2008, part of their conditioning and, and predictive programming that they do and uh, their Masonic, um, you know, of course, the, these guys um, who create these shows and these movies are always, um, you know, heavily initiates, heavily initiated as Freemasons. So they have, uh, you know, future insight on future events and they, their job was to predictively program and condition us. Um, whether we realize it or not. Um, so that's something that um, you have going on. You also have uh, you also had a situation where Obama was was saying that he was going to release the so-called hidden classified 28 pages of uh, of what really happened on 9/11. Of course, an- another false flag and, and total psyop. And we know that if if the government you know, saying that oh, all of a sudden now they're going to release the truth, then you know that there's an agenda behind this, and that it's not the truth that they're releasing at all. If you if you believe that your government is now going to tell you the truth after all these years of lies, and of course after all the all the lies Obama has told, then you you are are definitely greatly deceived. And uh, behind this, of course, they're saying that you know Saudi Arabia had had a key hand in 9/11. And the Saudi uh, kingdom has, um, or should I say the the Saudi regime, has said that they're going to dump $750 billion worth of assets of of Americas 
and uh, saying that you know that that will collapse and cripple the American economy if if this um, happens. So we see another scenario where um, uh, you know economic collapse is being you know kind of put in front of us, and also nine one one shown. So it, it, this could be another predictive programming mechanism that Obama is showing that he's going to pull his own 911 event in the near future, um, possibly to stay in office as we get closer to this so-called election that's supposed to be happening this fall um, in America. So um, that that's kind of what I took from it is just him and 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 the, and you know the powers that be showing that there's another false flag on the horizon and um, do, dealing with an economic collapse at the same time. So um, so those are uh, some of the things that have, that have, you know, kind of major, major um, news pieces that, that have been put out there. Um, but as far as prophecy is concerned, the, the, the main thing that has been happening is we've had a a, a, a serious increase in um, earthquakes and volcano activity, especially along the Ring of Fire. You've had uh, it, it started maybe about um, a month ago. You had uh, uh, earthquakes in Japan, and then uh, volcanoes going off in Japan. You had volcanoes going off in Alaska. Uh, volcanoes going off in Mexico. Earthquake happened in Ecuador. Um, more volcanoes going off down there in South America, and just recently, I believe either yesterday or the day before, had a major earthquake uh, off the coast of Australia, and I believe the island of Vanuatu. Um, so you see all this activity happening along this this what they call the Ring of Fire, but. It, for whatever reason, all this major activity, you don't really see any major uh, event happening along the American coast there on the on the West Coast. Um, so, and that's been that way for a long time now. You've seen these earthquakes. We had the uh, the nine point earthquake in Japan, which caused the tsunami. You've seen the major earthquakes in Chile and other parts uh, of the of the Ring of Fire, but for whatever reason, you're seeing no big event happening in America, but, but understand that that will, uh, soon not be the case. Um, and, and what you can take from that is that the big one is building up. They're not going to have these six points, seven points in America. They're going to use that energy and allow it to continue to, to, to gather steam as the, as the snowball continues to get bigger and move faster down the hill. You'll see a major, earthquake um happening in america major earthquakes but we do know one um one earthquake in specific that's going to happen in america will be the biggest earthquake the world has ever seen um and that is the one we, we read about in revelation 16 that will break babylon which we know is uh modern day america into three pieces it'll be so massive of an earthquake all right so so that's what we're going to go into tonight. Um, so let's go ahead and go over to our first article here. Let me let me pull it up. One moment. The first article comes off of endoftheamericandream.com, and it is titled. Five major earthquakes in 48 hours, as as a seismologist warns, catastrophic mega earthquakes are coming. All right, it says here, this is uh, April 14, 2016. It says, why is the crust of the earth shaking so violently all of a sudden? Over the past 48 hours, there have been five major earthquakes globally, and one prominent seismologist has declared that catastrophic mega earthquakes could be on the way. In fact, seismologist Roger Bilham of the University of Colorado has made headlines all over the world by warning that current conditions might trigger at least four earthquakes greater than 8.0 in magnitude. All right. 
So this the seismologist is saying that you could have a, a plethora of 8.0 happening in the near future. If his projections are accurate, our planet could be on the precipice of a wave of natural disasters unlike anything that any of us have ever experienced before. Since the beginning of 2016, South Asia has been hit by an unusual high number of large earthquakes, and this has scientists groping for an explanation. The following comes from the Express. Scientists say there has been above average number of significant earthquakes across South Asia and the Pacific since the start of the year. The increased frequency has sparked fears of a repeat of the Nepal quake of 2015 when 8,000 people died or even worse. Roger Bilham, seismologist of the University of Colorado, said the current conditions might trigger at least four earthquakes greater than 8.0 in magnitude. And if they delay, the strain accumulated during the centuries provokes more catastrophic mega earthquakes. A single magnitude 8.0 earthquake in a populated area would be a disaster of historic proportions. If we were to see four of them, like Roger Bilham is projecting, that would be a complete and utter nightmare. It is important to keep in mind that a magnitude 8.0 earthquake would be many, many times larger than the twin earthquakes that hit Japan earlier today. A devastating 6.4 magnitude earthquake has struck Japan hours after a first, which killed at least three and injured 19 others. The quakes, which struck the southwestern island of Kyushu, leveled more than a dozen, dozen homes, sparked fires, and trapped several people under collapsed buildings. Around 350 military personnel have been dispatched to aid the rescue effort and Chief Cabinet Secretary uh, Yoshihide Sugar. The first earthquake measuring 6.5 magnitude hit the Southeast Asian country late on Friday, local time, according to the Japan Meteorological Agency. Thursday, we also saw a magnitude 6.5 quake hit Vanatu, and a magnitude 5.9 earthquake shook the southern Philippines. So, we had Vanatu actually hit with a 6.5 um, just um, two weeks ago. And now this week we had a 7.0 hit Vanatu. A 5.9 magnitude earthquake hit off the coast of Mindano early Thursday, April 14th, seismologists said, with no damage or casualties immediately reported and no tsunami warning issued. The quake occurred at 2.21 a.m. off the coast of Zambanga del Norte, which is the epicenter at a depth of 15 kilometers. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology said, and of course on Wednesday, a huge magnitude 6.9 earthquake caused tremendous devastation in Myanmar. A magnitude 6.9 earthquake struck Myanmar on Wednesday causing tremors around the region, including in neighboring Bangladesh, where scores were reported injured and stampedes and buildings were damaged. The quake, took, which took place at a depth of 134 kilometers, hit some 400 kilometers northwest of Myanmar's capital, Nap Yida, U.S. Geological Survey, and was also felt in parts of India and China. There were no imminent reports of casualties, although the region where the earthquake Hit has poor communications infrastructure like many of Myanmar's outlying provinces. So why is this happening? Why is Asia shaking so violently all of a sudden? And does this shaking bode ill for other areas along the Ring of Fire, including the west coast of the U.S.? I think that it is important to point out that all this shaking did not just begin this week. In fact, ever since the start of this calendar year, there has been a lot of unusual earthquake activity all over Asia. Just four days ago, on April 10th, six people died in Pakistan when a 6.6 magnitude quake hit Kabul with aftershocks in India. Two days before, on April 8th, there was a magnitude 4.2 quake in Nepal. Nepal has suffered a larger 5.5 magnitude one on February 22nd. A month before, on January 20th, there was a 6.1 magnitude earthquake in China. And 16 days earlier, 11 people died when a 6.7 magnitude earthquake hit Manipur in India. 
All right, so we see all kind of earthquakes going on in the east. And again, Nepal was the one that was hit with a major earthquake last year that killed 8,000 people. And we see that they're still getting hit with six point, four point, you know, um, more and more earthquakes on top of, you know, the recent ones or the ones that happened, you know, just last year. So that, that's typically what happens is once you have an earthquake hit a certain area, you'll have aftershocks and you've had 6.0 aftershocks, which aftershocks usually are smaller. Usually a 6.0 is a major earthquake. So when you have a, a 7.0 earthquake or greater, and then you get followed by 6 point magne, uh, you know, aftershocks, that's, that's, that's really bad. So it says here, in addition, let us not forget about all of the volcanic eruptions that have been in the news in recent weeks. According to Volcano Discovery, 38 volca volcanoes around the globe are erupting right now. This is definitely an unusually high number. In Matthew 24, Christ warned us that there would be earthquakes in diverse places just prior to his return. This is something that I discuss quite a bit in my new book. If we truly are in the times that the Bible refers to as the last days, we should expect the shaking of our planet to continue to intensify. And that's another thing that validates the Bible and the New Testament is that when you read Matthew 24, the Messiah speaks of these earthquakes happening in diverse places, that this would be a sign of that we were in a troubling time that would lead to his second coming. So there's no way that that could have been written and not and, and it's happening today and it just be a coincidence that this man did not exist, that the Bible is not real. Um, and, um, and, 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 and we're way past just that prophecy when he said that they would happen and, and it would be happening in diverse places with what's going on this year. And when you see uh, all of this news that we're going to cover, you'll understand that we are in the major contraction time of the birth pangs. Um, you know, of course, when a woman is, is given birth, having a baby, the contractions intensify, they, get, they, they become more and more prevalent, and they become more and more painful. So we're seeing these, this happen with these earthquakes um, as they become bigger in scale, they become more in number. Um, this, this let us know that the birth is about to take place. And when I say the birth, speaking of the birth of their new world order, before it is crushed by the new world order that Christ is bringing when he returns. Um, but continuing on here, it says, if seismologist Roger Bilham is right, and we do not begin to see a series of absolutely massive earthquakes that could dramatically change the course of world events literally overnight, even a single magnitude 8.0 earthquake in a major city in Japan, China, or the U.S. would cause global markets to crash it would and would mean billions of dollars in economic damage, right? So we're only one natural disaster away to cause the the economy to crash globally. It says here, so let us hope that the crust of our planet begins to stabilize. But let us also not ignore the warnings of the scientists. And let me add, let us not warn. Let us not. Um, ignore the warnings of Christ What they are warning us about right now Lines up perfectly with what Christ warned us about Nearly 2,000 years ago And that is a very sobering thing to consider Alright, and we've talked about these earthquakes for a long time Many different broadcasts Many different lessons for the church So this is not something that those who have been listeners are or those who are familiar with Bible, the Bible and Bible prophecy, is nothing that you are, um, you know, surprised to see. Maybe um, when it happens, it, it's just surreal to see this prophecy unfolding. But it's nothing that is um, that we didn't already know was going to take place. All right, so let's go to the uh, the next article. Also on end of the American Dream dot com. One moment, let me get it here. All right, so the next article is...
titled Yellowstone Eruption in 2016. Shocking new video shows what is really going on at Yellowstone. April 17, 2016. Over the past week, our planet has been hit by large earthquake after large earthquake. And according to Volcano Discovery, there are 38 volcanoes around the world that are erupting right now. We have seen a dramatic spike in global seismic activity that is unlike anything that we have seen in ages. And that is why what is going on at Yellowstone is so incredibly alarming. Geologists tell us that a full-blown eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would have up to 2,000 times the power of the Mount St. Helens volcanic eruption of 1980 and approximately two-thirds of the country would immediately become uninhabitable. As you will see below, there are signs that something big is getting ready to happen at Yellowstone, and if it does erupt, all of our lives will be permanently changed forever. All right, so I just want to examine Yellowstone for one moment and what was said. You have one area of the country, one volcano, if it were to go off, we're being told that two-thirds of America would become uninhabitable. That's just one natural disaster from one specific situation that can cause a natural disaster. We're not talking about all the other fault lines, all right? We're not talking about um, these events happening and the nuclear power plants melting down. We're not talking about um, you know, the fact that other countries are heavily in the news talking about how they want to nuke America and send nukes in, how ISIS, which is a CIA, um, uh, Israeli-created um, organization, is, is saying that they want to set a nuclear bomb off in Manhattan or any, any place in America. All right, so all these other things coupled with a volcano two-thirds of America uninhabitable and Yellowstone is so so massive of a uh, you know uh, of a of a, of a, of a uh, I don't even know what you want to call it it's a natural a, a, a natural um, disaster scenario that it would actually affect the whole world with what it would shoot up into the sky and the fact that you would have uh the sun blocked out and, and, um, you know, you would have, a, you know, temperature drops, you would have crop die offs worldwide just from Yellowstone. It's so massive. It says here, I want to show, I want to share with you some footage from Yellowstone that was recorded on Thursday night. In this video, it appears to be as bright as day, even though it is the middle of the night. You can see a whole host of geysers steaming violently, and Old Faithful just keeps going off over and over. So you have a video here on the website, and basically it's nighttime, but it looks like it's daytime because it's so much stuff going on, uh, lighting up the sky in the Yellowstone Park. And we've talked in, in the past about... Um, Yellowstone was actually uh, the the pavement and the concrete that the ground the uh, the the, the roads that are laid in that area actually ha have been melting because the ground is getting so hot there. Um, so we we've seen Yellowstone continue to escalate uh, over the years, and and now it is it is like it's it's getting you know warmed up, like if you had a uh, a locomotive or a train. And you see, you know, just more and more steam coming out the top, more and more smoke coming out the top as you start to throw more and more fire, more and more uh, wood on the fire. And it's just getting revved up. It says here, the stunning footage was posted by a YouTube user known as Kate Martin 2016. And the following is what she had to say about the video that you just saw. There are places steaming. I have never seen steam before. And also note that the bright ground is back. There are no shadows, so it is not from above. As you know, the cameras were froze up last night, so we could not see what was going, or so we thought. I found a way. Somehow, don't ask me how, 
the Geyser Observation Study Site was able to capture the entire night with no freeze-ups and cutting in and out. How is that? Anyway, I got it and slowed it down so you can see better. Old Faithful has weird seismos, had weird seismos last night and was going off constantly. But it wasn't just that one night. The weird activity at Yellowstone has continued, and you can watch even more recent footage that Kate Martin has posted right here and right here. So what does this mean? I don't know, but watching that footage definitely got my attention. And it is interesting to note that just a few weeks ago, the Sashon River changed color and started boiling without any warning whatsoever. It says the Shishon River near Yellowstone National Park suddenly and without warning started boiling, changed color, and began to emit a sulfuric odor on March 25th. Nearby witnesses wondered if they were all going to die. The current consensus among geologists and other experts is that a portion of the Shoshone River began to boil located near Cody, Wyoming, and a new Yellowstone vent has opened up. As mysterious universe reports, the boiling river near Yellowstone runs just east of Yellowstone National Park. It is close enough to the park and supervolcano to be a canary in a coal mine as it relates to unusual geom- uh, geothermic events. The event was initially recorded by Dewey Vinderhoff, a photographer who spotted the Shoshone River near Yellowstone boiling and noted other bizarre features in the river. When a river located above a supervolcano that can wipe out most of the country starts boiling, you would think that would make headline news all over the nation, but it didn't. It would be exceedingly difficult to overstate the potential danger that Yellowstone poses to the U.S. Other than extremely an extremely large asteroid or meteor, it is hard to imagine any natural disaster that would pose a greater threat. The following comes from an excellent article by Steve Elwart. The Yellowstone caldera, or cauldron, sits on top of North America's largest volcanic field. 400 miles under the Earth's surface is a magma hotspot that reaches up to just 30 miles below ground level before spreading out over an area of 300 miles across three states. Over all this sits the volcano. While most scientists believe the probability of a major eruption is very small, there are signs that have some analysts worried, and most agree the volcano holds catastrophic potential. It could blast 240 cubic miles of ash, rocks, and lava into the atmosphere, rendering about two-thirds of the nation immediately uninhabitable, according to some estimates, and plunge the world into a nuclear winter. Right, so not only can nuclear bombs cause it a nuclear winter, but a a volcano with the right event can cause a nuclear winter as well. That certainly does not sound good. And as I mentioned above, above, volcanic activity all over the planet is rising. 38 volcanoes are erupting at the moment, and it seems like we hear about another new eruption almost every day now. But let us hope that Yellowstone does not erupt anytime soon. There are approximately 3,000 quakes in the area around Yellowstone every single year. So it is a very seismically active region. In the event of a full-scale eruption of Yellowstone, virtually the entire northwest U.S. will be completely destroyed. Basically, everything with a 100-mile radius would be immediately killed. Salt Lake City would literally be toast. And almost everyone and everything in Denver would be dead in short order. Further away, volcanic ash would rain down continually for weeks. Those foolish enough to step outside would quickly discover that the ash turns into a substance similar to cement in the lungs, and many would die from suffocation. The amount of volcanic ash released by Yellowstone would be almost unimaginable. In fact, it has been estimated that a full-blown eruption would dump a layer of volcanic ash that is at least 10 feet deep up to 1,000 miles away. Food production in America would be almost totally wiped out, and the volcanic winter that would result from a Yellowstone eruption would dramatically cool the planet. Some have projected that global temperatures would decline by up to 20 degrees. In the end, the death 
famine and destruction that would that we would experience would be vastly greater than anything that we have ever seen in the history of Western civilization. Now, reading that particular sentence reminds me of Revelation 18 when it talks about the plagues that would happen on Babylon. Um, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall utterly be burned with fire. So, yeah, we know that the missiles are coming to America, but these natural disasters like volcanoes shooting up hot ash will play a part in the fire raining down on America. The fire and brimstone that rains down, and it has a similar judgment that we saw when we read in Sodom and Gomorrah. It says here, so yes, there is a reason to be concerned that weird stuff is going on at Yellowstone right now. Let us just hope and pray that we do not see an eruption in 2016 or anytime soon. All right, so, you know, again, you've seen these volcanoes and earthquakes going off along the Ring of Fire and other parts of the world, but not America. So Americans are being kept in the dark because when these things like what we see with Yellowstone are happening, they're not speaking about it. So because they know it would, it would cause mass panic, they want to keep American people. Uh, in, a, in a state of psychosis or or, or zombie-like nature um, until the big event takes place, and, and then it'll be too late to do any preparation. But for those who think that it's, this is happening all over the world and it's not going to happen to America, they are greatly deceived because this is, this is going to be great destruction and plagues um, that's going to happen to America from all of these particular scenarios that we discuss uh, and have discussed. All right. So let's go. Speaking of volcanoes, let's go to our next article here. One moment. The next article comes off of end of the American dream.com. And it is titled, the shaking continues. The most dangerous volcano in Mexico has erupted in spectacular fashion. April 19, 2016. More than two, more than 25 million people live in the vicinity of Mount uh, uh, Popo Capetal, including Mexico City's 18 million residents. At 2.32 local time on Tuesday mo morning, the most dangerous volcano in Mexico roared to life in spectacular fashion. And this has many experts extremely concerned about what is coming next. Uh, Pocatepetl uh, is an Aztec word that means smoking mountain. <clears throat> and historians tell us that once upon a time, entire Aztec cities were buried in superheated mud from this volcano. In fact, the superheated mud flows were so deep that they buried entire Aztec pyramids. A full-blown eruption of Mount Pocacapetl would be a, a, a catastrophe unlike anything that modern Mexico has ever experienced before. Considering what has been happening in Ecuador, Japan, and at Yellowstone over this past week, I believe that there is a great reason for concern. The eruption of Mount Pocacapetl very early this morning took residents of the area very much by surprise. The following is how one Mexican news course reported the news. The volcano Pocatepetl came to life at 2.32 this morning, sending out a column of ash that fell on much of the city of Puebla and closed the airport. <clears throat> the Natural Disaster Prevention Center, Cinepred, said the volcano spewed ash to an altitude of about three kilometers above the crater. The explosion was accompanied by the emission of uh, incandescent fragments, which were reported to be landing up to 1.6 kilometers away, northeast of the volcano, which is commonly known as El Papo. But words could not really describe how, how spectacular this, this eruption was. If you are interested, you can view video footage of the volcano eruption here. So they have uh, a video here showing the volcano erupting. And it does look massive. 
It says, meanwhile, seismologists all over the globe are speculating about which area of our planet may be hit next. For example, scientists in India believe that the tremendous amount of tectonic strain that is built up out there could ultimately produce a magnitude 8 or magnitude 9 earthquake, and they are convinced that this quake can come at any time. A subduction process similar to the one that caused the Ecuadorian quake is happening under the Himalayan region as well, where the Indian plate is getting inside the Chinese landmass. This northward push has been creating a huge amount of tectonic strain in the region, making it particularly prone to earthquakes. Scientists believe there is so much energy stored in the area that an earthquake of magnitude greater than 8, possibly even 9, would be needed to release it. This earthquake can come at any time. Here in the U.S., some experts are deeply concerned that the West Coast is particularly vulnerable. One of those experts is former USGS scientist Jim Birkeland. The following is what Wikipedia had to say about him. Jim Birkeland studied geology at the University of California, Berkeley, earning the Bachelor's of Arts degree in 1958. Thereafter, he worked for the U.S. Geological Survey while pursuing graduate study. In 1964, he took a position at the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. After further graduate study, he taught for a year at Appalachian State University, 1972 to 73, then returned to Cal to work as county geologist for Santa Clara County from 1973 until he retired in 1994. During a recent interview with Bobby Powell, Birkeland explained that most megaquakes take place either during a new moon or a full moon, and he pointed to the San Andreas Fault and the Cascadia subduction zone as areas that he is particularly concerned about at the moment. Is the big one imminent? Famed USGS scientist Jim Berkland, the man who predicted the Loma Prieta World Series earthquake, has a terrifying warning for the west coast of the U.S. in the wake of massive earthquakes in Ecuador and Japan that have left hundreds dead, awakened volcanoes around the Pacific Ocean's ring of fire, and kicked off earthquake swarms in Hawaii, Arizona, and Yellowstone National Park. Beware the new and full moons, Berkeley says in the exclusive interview. The maverick geologist says that 20 of the last 25 megaquakes have occurred on the dates of new and full moons, the result of uh, equinoctial tides, extremely uh, gravitational forces that cause solid earth to expand and contract much as ocean tides rise and fall. Berkland says that he is particularly worried about the San Andreas Fault in the L.A. Basin and the Cascadian subduction zone along the coast of Oregon and Washington State, where a long overdue earthquake would undoubtedly be accompanied by a massive tsunami that could kill thousands and cause billions of dollars in property damage. Even though I recently wrote a major article about the vulnerability of the Cascadia subduction zone, I want to make it clear that I'm not forecasting that any particular disaster will hit at any particular area at any particular time. But what we can say with certainty is that the crust of our planet is becoming increasingly unstable. Our world is being pummeled by dozens of earthquakes of magnitude 4 or greater. And as you read this article, a total of 38 volcanoes are erupting worldwide. And it is quite interesting to note that in 1906, there were major earthquakes in Ecuador and Japan that preceded the historic San Francisco earthquake. On January 31st, 1906, an, enormal, an enormous magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake hit Ecuador, and that was followed by a 7.1 earthquake in Japan on March 17th. Of course, most Americans have already heard about the 7.8 earthquake that hit San Francisco on April 18th of that year, but most people don't understand that it came in the context of these other major quakes. Could we be witnessing a similar pattern today? In Matthew 24, Christ warned us that earthquakes in diverse places would be one of the signs that his return was drawing near. He also explained that the time immediately preceding his return would be the worst time in all of human history. Could it be possible that we are now entering that period of time. All right. And speaking of tsunamis, 
takes us to our next article, which comes off of the Daily Mail. I'm going to get it here in one moment. The next article is titled, Is America Ready for a Tsunami? Scientists reveal plans to deal with killer waves across the Pacific Northwest. This is uh, April 21st, 2016. The threat of a mass the threat of a massive tsunami hitting the Pacific Northwest has concerned scientists for years. Experts say an event of this kind occurs roughly every four to 6,000 years, and the area is overdue a similar quake to leave thousands dead or displaced. Now states such as California, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska are looking to both the past and future to prepare for a tsunami on the U.S. Pacific coastline. Plans for manage, managing tsunami risk on the West Coast are still evolving, according to scientists speaking at a at the Seismologi- uh, Seismological Society of America's 2016 annual meeting, held April 20th through 22nd in Reno, Nevada. Meanwhile, geologists are searching for evidence of past tsunamis in the region to help them refine their estimates of tsunami risk. There is, for instance, the evidence for frequent and large earthquakes and tsunamis occurring within the past 2,000 years in parts of the eastern Aleutian Islands. There are signs that these earthquakes have spanned the boundary between the locked and creeping portion of the region's megathrust fault. Earthquakes in the area could cause significant tsunami effects across the Pacific, especially in Hawaii and California. Despite the fact that we have learned a significant amount about the earthquake sources for tsunamis, there are gaps in our understanding of past tsunamis, especially prehistoric tsunamis, says Rick Wilson a senior engineering geologist with the California Geological Survey. If we can demonstrate when and where tsunamis occurred in the past, that information will give us a better understanding of the return periods in these areas. And that can go into the probabilistic analyses that have helped us understand our hazard and risk better. Wilson, who serves as the science coordinator for the state of California tsunami preparedness and hazard mitigation program noted that more than 440,000 people have died worldwide since 1850 as a result of tsunamis. And they have a lot of different um, pictures here showing um, diagrams of um, just different, um, you know, the fault line and, you know, just, um, Videos here showing, you know, what what it would look like uh, from a um, computer-generated model. All right. It says here, the daily tsunamis caused by the 2004 Sumatran earthquake and the 2011 Tohoku earthquake uh, brought increased public attention to tsunami science, warning, and preparation. At the SS meeting, Wilson will discuss how California officials use state tsunami response playbooks to respond to a tsunami advisory issued after the September 2015 magnitude 8.3 Illapel earthquake in Chile. The playbooks were created after the 2011 Tohoku earthquake when there was very little consistency between communities in California and what they did, Wilson says. Some evacuated their entire zone. Some just evacuated their beaches. The new playbooks offer a variety of action plans depending on the size of the tsunami from a distant source, Wilson says. The future of tsunami response and preparedness might come from, a new, from, from new technologies such as camera-bearing drones. These could send video messages of incoming waves to convince coastal dwellers to evacuate, says uh, Masha Hayashi, a retired IBM engineer, presenting at the SSA meeting. And there's also the remote possibility that the trigger for a tsunami might not come from an earthquake, but from an asteroid strike on the Earth. In an SSA talk, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory researcher Shohel Ezidine will share data from a study 
that models the effects of an asteroid-generated tsunami coastlines in the U.S. Depending on the asteroid's impact of the U.S. East Coast, the Gulf of Mexico, and into the Pacific Ocean near San Francisco. Last month, scientists were finally able to trace the origins of the historic tsunami that struck the coast of Japan just before midnight on January 27, 1700. They linked it to a powerful seismic event in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. along the Cascadia subduction zone. And if anybody remembers when um, Japan had its big earthquake and the tsunamis hit back in 2011, um, a lot of people on the West Coast uh, in California were concerned that uh, it would sweep across the Pacific Ocean and tsunamis would hit the, the West Coast of California uh, by what happened all the way on the other, you know, almost halfway side of the world in, in Asia. It says here, Cascadia can make an earthquake almost 30 times more energetic energetic than the San Andreas to start with. Chris Goldfinger, a professor of ge geophysics at Oregon State University, told CNN. Then it generates a tsunami at the same time, which side-by-side -side motion of the San Andreas can't do. The Cascadia could deliver a huge 9.0 mag uh, magnitude quake, and the shaking could last anything from 3 to 5 minutes, scientists claim. Case 3 minutes, and I've been in a 9 in Japan, 3 minutes is an eternity, said Goldfinger. It is a very, very long time. Goldfinger says we'll lose bridges, highway routes, and that the coast will probably be entirely closed down. As a result, it would be difficult to get around and rescue crews would be overwhelmed. Federal, state, and military officials have been working together to draft plans to be followed when the big one happens. These contingency plans reflect deep anxiety about the potential gravity of the looming disaster, upward of 14,000 people dead in the worst-case scenarios, 30,000 injured, thousands left homeless, and the region's economy set back for years, if not decades. As a response, what planners envision is a deployment of civilian and military personnel and equipment that would eclipse the response to any natural disaster that has occurred thus far in the U.S. There would be waves of cargo planes, helicopters, and ships, as well as a, a ten thousands, ten, tens of thousands of soldiers, emergency officials, mortuary teams, police officers, firefighters, engineers, medical personnel, and other specialists. The response will be uh, orders of magnitude lar larger than the Hurricane Katrina or Superstorm Sandy. And Lieutenant Colonel uh, Clayton Braun of the Washington State, said Lieutenant Clayton Braun of the Washington State Army National Guard. Oregon's response plan is called the Cascadian Playbook, named after the threatening offshore fault, the Cascadian subduction zone. The plan unveiled last year has been handed out to key officials to the state so that the state can respond quickly when disaster strikes. That playbook is never more than 100 feet from where I am, said Andrew Phelps, director of the Oregon Office of Emergency Management. A magnitude 9 earthquake and tsunami that devastated parts of Japan in 2011 gave greater clarity to what the Pacific Northwest needs to do to improve its readiness for a similar catastrophe. The Japanese quake and tsunami allowed light bulbs to go off for policymakers, Phelps said. Much still needs to be done, and it is impossible to fully prepare for a catastrophe of this magnitude, but those responsible for drafting the evolving contingency plans believe that they are making headway. Worst-case scenarios show that more than 1,000 bridges in Oregon and Washington State could either collapse or be so damaged that they are unusable. The main coastal highway, U.S. Route 101, will soft, suffer heavy damage from the shaking and from the tsunami. Traffic on I-5, one of the most important thoroughfares in the nation, will likely have to be rerouted because of large cracks in the pavement. <clears throat> Seattle, Portland and other urban areas could suffer considerable damage, such as the collapse of structures built before codes were updated to take into account a megaquake. The last full rip of the Cascadian subduction zone happened in January 1700. The exact date and destructive power was determined from buried forests along the Pacific Northwest coast and an orphan tsunami that washed ashore in Japan. 
geologists digging in coastal marshes and offshore canyon bottoms have also found evidence of earlier great earthquakes and tsunamis. The inferred timeline of those events gives us a recurrence interval between Cascadia megaquakes of roughly every four to 600 years, reports the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. All right, and we've talked about FEMA and how they have been preparing for all types of negatives and whatnot over years. And since these um, earthquakes and volcanoes have been taking uh, place this year, you've seen more FEMA drills and exercises and um, preparation happening as well. Um, all right, so. All these things are a shadow of things to come and um, actually warnings to the world that the judgment is here and will happen. It's just the fact of, uh, you know, will we actually, you know, take heed to the warning and we give an ample time to uh, repent and get ourselves right and together. But um, again, when you're living in a, in a world gone mad, um, and been people so bent on doing whatever they want to do, and um, you know nobody's paying attention that judgment is coming. Um, so, but we will continue here in just a quick moment. We're going to take a quick uh, commercial break. When we come back, we will finish up our news uh, talking about these earthquakes and these volcanoes. So, um, stay tuned. information. If you have health challenges that are not being resolved, then pay a visit to BeYourNaturally.com. Did you know that the Creator designed the body to regenerate? Weaknesses can be strengthened and the body brought back into balance to function at its optimum state. To assist the body's healing mechanism, I use body cleansing with herbal protocols in combination with the natural health laws. I aim to equip you with the necessary tools to help you achieve vibrant health. If you have the faith and commitment to do what is necessary to regain your health, then you are on the winning side. The initial 15 minutes talk is absolutely free. Visit www.beyondnaturally.com. Join the health revolution today. Are you tired of chemicals, harmful chemicals in your toothpaste, such as sodium lauryl sulfate, tricolcin, fluoride, preservatives, sugar, and more? Well, Exodus is the number one company in making herbal tooth powder. This revolutionary herbal gum and tooth powder, which yields immediate results within one week, is ideal for the entire family. It reduces bleeding in the gum counteracts the side effects of chemotherapy burning in the gum tissue, tightens the gum, whitens the teeth, rid the mouth of conquer sores, freshens the breath, and restore the gum tissue to health. ExodusHerbalGumPowder.com For more herbal products, visit us at ExodusGumPowder.com Do you have a talent, a company, or a service to render? Would you like an avenue to get the word out? Well, GOCC Blog Talk Radio would like to connect with you to help fulfill your vision. Don't have a clear direction on where to go? It's okay. GOCC Blog Talk Radio can assist you with making your very own commercial. Call us now at 1-888-334-3330 and be on your way to the expansion of your business. That's one 1- 888-334-3330 GOCC Blog Talk Radio Station Starting the foundations for the building blocks of life GOCC members ask for special rates All right, Shabbat Shalom, we're back Have a few more articles here uh, Before we end segment uh, Segment one 
there's a article on the economiccollapseblog.com that says dozens of large earthquakes strike as speculation mounts that Japan's southern island may split. All right, and we're not going to read that article because of the article that came out following that article. And it pretty much covers what this article is saying. So let's go to that article. All right, this article comes off of endoftheamericandream.com. It says apocalyptic drone footage shows giant cracks in the earth on Japan's southern island, April 20th, 2016. The drone footage that you are about to see is absolutely jaw-dropping. When I just watched it, I could hardly believe the extent of the devastation that has taken place on Japan's southern island. Near the end of last week, a magnitude 6.5 quake was quickly followed by a magnitude 7.3 quake just 28 hours later. Those earthquakes made headlines all over the globe, but at first glance, those numbers don't really look that big. So why was there such tremendous damage? Well, it turns out that those two major quakes worked in conjunction with more than 600 smaller quakes to cause historic devastation all across Kyushu. As you're about to see, giant fissures have opened up in the ground right along a fault line that runs directly across Japan's southern island. And this has a lot of people extremely alarmed. Once a major disaster falls out of the news, the rest of the world tends to forget about it. But for those on Kayashu, this crisis is far from over. Authorities are still scrambling to rescue those that have been stranded by the recent earthquakes, and at this point, it's a race against time. Survivors of a series of Japanese quakes are struggling with food and water shortages with rescuers digging through mud and rubble for the missing. Two major earthquakes and about 600 smaller tremors have rocked the southwestern island of Kyushu since late Thursday, leaving a total of 46 people dead and more than 1,000 injured, 208 of them seriously. Many who abandoned their damaged or destroyed homes have had to sleep in temporary accommodation, huddle in makeshift shelters, or sleep in their cars. And local media have reported problems in delivering food and other essentials. In a previous article that I posted a few days ago, I shared a map from the USGS that showed all of the significant quakes on Kyushu over the previous week. As you can see, they form something of a straight line right across the island. Earlier today, I went to the USGS website once again and pulled up all of the significant earthquakes on Kyushu over the past week. So the following map contains the most updated information for the past seven days. And once again, we see essentially the exact same formation. So in this diagram, what it shows is a almost perfect line of earthquakes going over this island. And we understand that they have their technology that, which can cause quakes and natural disasters. So it doesn't shock me to see this perfect alignment of quakes going across this island to to focus in on maybe a weak spot to break this island um, in half or into pieces. Could this be what they're looking to use uh, against America when that time comes for that great earthquake? This could be a testing uh, testing ground. To, to try this on, and break this island apart and then later take that uh, information back and, and use it on America when, um, you know, that earthquake takes, takes, takes place. It says here, all of these earthquakes have been happening along a major fault line, and there is speculation that Japan's southern island of Kyushu may be starting to break apart from the fault line. Of course, this kind of thing has happened a lot in the history of our planet, but nobody is quite sure that that might, what that might mean for Kyushu. Are we witnessing the beginning of a process that could take decades to complete, or could it be possibly that things might unfold much, much faster than that? The reason why I shared all of this with you first is so that you can put the following 
footage in proper context. This apocalyptic drone footage that you're about to see from Kyushu was all filmed along this fault line. In all of my days, I have never seen anything quite like So you have a Japan drone footage video here showing um, what this actually looks like with this split. Some of the shots in the video look like they come straight out of a Hollywood disaster movie. The truth is that the damage that has been done is a whole lot more serious than the number 6.5, 7.3 suggests. The geography of Japan's southern island is being fundamentally altered, and this is going to have dramatic consequences for millions of ordinary Japanese citizens. And of course, what is happening in Japan is just part of the great shaking that we have seen all over the planet in recent weeks. Unfortunately, the shaking has not stopped. Just within the past 24 hours, we have seen major earth around the world, magnitudes 5.4, 6.1, 5.1, 5.8, 5.3, and 5.8. <clears throat> Most of the quakes that we have witnessed in recent weeks have been along the Ring of Fire, which roughly encircles the Pacific Ocean. Approximately 90% of all global earthquakes and approximately 70% of all global volcanic eruptions each year occur along the ring of fire and many scientists are becoming extremely alarmed that it is becoming much more seismically active once again of course the west coast of the u.s is directly along the ring of fire and experts tell us that the san andreas fault and the cascadia subduction zone are both way overdue for a major earthquake in addition mount rainier and a whole host of other once active volcanoes are located along the west coast as well even a single major eruption would cause tremendous chaos, death, and devastation, and fragile financial markets would likely crash very hard all over the world. So what has been happening in Japan and Ecuador and other places along the Ring of Fire has tremendous implications for those of us living in the U.S. Let us pray that the shaking starts to settle down, but let us all be prepared for what might happen if it doesn't. And, of course, speaking of Hollywood, they have released the movie San Andreas last year as a way of predict predictively programming you for the future event that will happen there on the West Coast and other events that will happen in America. Right, so that, that movie comes with perfect timing a year before we're starting to see this uh, starting to unfold along the Ring of Fire. All right, so Next article on the activist post dot com. One moment here, let me get the article here. All right, the next article is titled Earth Changes in twenty sixteen. How to get prepared for the coming earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. April 26, 2016. All over the world, seismic activity is increasing. In recent weeks, we have seen a dramatic earthquake in Ecuador. More than 600 earthquake experts extremely alarmed about what is happening to, to Japan's southern island. And 37 volcanoes around the planet are erupting right now. Most of the large earthquakes and volcanic eruptions that we have witnessed lately have come along the Ring of Fire, which is an area of seismic instability which roughly encircles the Pacific Ocean. Fortunately, the west coast of the U.S. has been spared so far. The scientists tell us that the tension has been building up along the San Andreas Fault and the Cascadian subduction zone for decades, and they assure us that it is only a matter of time before we see a major event. When that day arrives, will you be prepared? There were a couple of notable seismic events which took place on Monday. First of all, the largest volcano in Russia's far east, known as Kolochevskaya Sopka, violently erupted. Steaming hot ass was shot more than three miles up into the air, but fortunately it is not a heavily populated area. So we see a, a volcano going off in Russia, which is something that you really never hear about. Um, this represents yet another major volcanic eruption along the Ring of Fire, and this has some scientists extremely concerned about what may be coming next. 
here in the U.S., an unusual swarm of 21 earthquakes along the Arizona-Nevada border is also raising eyebrows. More small earthquakes shook northwest Arizona Sunday, adding to the list of tremors that have struck the area since March 29th. The Arizona Geological Survey said two quakes occurred, including a magnitude 2.6 quake at 12.07 a.m. There has been a swarm of 21 quakes in an area along the Arizona-Nevada line southwest of Littlefield, Arizona, which is also close to southwestern Utah, and the frequency and span puzzles geologists. The good news is that we have not had a truly historic earthquake in the U.S. for decades, and there have been no major volcanic eruptions since Mount St. Helens exploded back in 1980. But scientists assure us that we are living on borrowed time, and there are three extremely dangerous volcanoes in North America that I'm keeping a close Watch on right now. Number one, Mount Pocotepetl. Pocotepetl is an Aztec word that can be translated as smoking mountain, and more than 25 million people live within range of this extraordinary dangerous mountain. Experts tell us that during the time of the Aztec, entire cities were completely buried in superheated mud from this volcano. All right, so... Um, we read, uh, you know, pretty much this in the previous article, but that, remember, being in Mexico is still part of Babylon. Babylon is all of North America, not just the United States, right? So that uh, that volcano going off won't only affect America, uh, uh, Mexico, but also can affect um, North America and Central and South America. Number two, Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier has been dubbed a time bomb, the most dangerous mountain in the U.S. and one of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world because it sits so close to Seattle, Tacoma, and other major cities along the coast of the Washington state. In the event of a full-blown eruption, countless numbers of people would literally be buried alive in a tsunami of superheated mud. These tsunamis of superheated mud are also known as lahars. And scientists believe that Mount Rainier is capable of producing lahars that could move at speeds of up to 50 miles per hour. I am so convinced that an eruption of Mount Rainier is in our future that I even put one in my novel. And number three, the Yellowstone supervolcano. Many of us who are a bit older still remember the eruption of Mount St. Helens back in 1980. Well, scientists tell us that a full-blown eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would have up to 2,000 times the power of that eruption. Salt Lake City would be toast. Anything outside, caught outside in Denver would probably be dead in pretty short order. And a layer of volcanic ash at, at least 10 feet deep would be dumped on everything, even up to 1,000 miles away. Food production in America would be virtually wiped out. And a volcanic winter would cool global temperatures by up to 20 degrees for an extended period of time. In other words, life as we know it would come to an end. That is why the extremely unusual activity going on at the Yellowstone at Yellowstone right now is such a concern. If it decides to blow, world history would make a dramatic turn in a single moment. So what should we do? As always, we should never give in to fear. There are definitely going to be major earthquakes and historic volcanic eruptions in North America, and we are going to have to deal with them. Doing some common sense things in advance will give you and your family the best chance of calmly and smoothly making it through such a crisis. Below, I have shared some tips that come directly from the CDC. This first set of tips suggests that you and your family suggest things that you and your family can do to get prepared for a major earthquake. Gather emergency supplies. Stock up now on emergency supplies that can be used after an earthquake. These supplies should include a first aid kit, survival kits for the home, automobile and workplace, and emergency water and food. Store enough supplies to last at least three days. Evacuation plans. If an earthquake occurs, you may need to evacuate a damaged area afterward. By planning and practicing for evacuation, you will be better prepared to respond appropriately and efficiently to signs of danger or to directions by civil authorities. Take a few minutes with your family to discuss a home evacuation plan. 
Sketch a floor plan of your home. Walk through each room and discuss evacuation details. Plan a second way to exit from each room or area if possible. If you need a special if you need special equipment such as a rope ladder, mark where it is located. <clears throat> mark where your emergency food, water, first aid kids, and fire extinguishers are located. Mark where the utility switches or valves are located so, so that they can be turned off if possible. Indicate the location of your family's emergency outdoor meeting place. Establish priorities. Time before an earthquake strikes to write an emergency priority list, including important items to be hand carried by you, other items in order of importance to you and your family, items to be to be removed by car or truck if one is available, things to do if time permits, such as locking doors, windows, turning off the utilities, etc. Write down important information. Make a list of important information and put it in a secure lo location. Include on your list important telephone numbers such as police, fire, paramedics, and medical centers. The names, addresses, and telephone numbers of your insurance agents, including policy types and numbers. The telephone numbers of the electric, gas, and water companies. The names and telephone numbers of neighbors. The name and telephone number of your landlord or property manager. Important medical information such as allergies, regular medications, etc. The vehicle identification number, year and model, and license number of your automobile, boat, RV, etc. Your bank's or credit union's telephone number, account types, and numbers. Radio and television broadcast stations to tune in for emergency broadcast information. Gather and store important documents in a fireproof safe. Birth certificates, owner certificates automobiles, boats, etc., social security cards, insurance policies, wills, household inventory, including list of contents, uh, photographs of contents of every room, photographs of items of high value, such as jewelry, paintings, collector's items. Uh, preparing for volcanic eruption requires a strategy that is a little bit different. Here are more tips from the CDC. If you are told to evacuate, follow authorities' instructions if they tell you to leave the area. Though it may seem safe to stay at home and, and wait out an eruption, doing so could be very dangerous. Volcanoes spew hot, dangerous gases, ash, lava, and rock that are powerfully destructive. Tune into the radio or television for volcano, volcano updates. Listen for disaster sirens and warning signals. Review your emergency plan and gather your emergency supplies. Be sure to pack at least a one-week supply of pre prescription medication. Prepare an emergency kit for your vehicle with food, flares, booster cables, maps, tools, a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, sleeping bags, a flashlight, batteries, etc. <clears throat> Fill your vehicle's gas tank. If no vehicle is available, make arrangements with friends or family for transportation or follow authorities' instructions on where to obtain transportation. Place vehicles under cover, if at all possible. Put livestock in an enclosed area. Plan ahead and, and take pets with you, but be aware that many emergency shelters cannot accept animals. Fill your clean water containers. Fill sinks and bathtubs with water as an extra supply for washing. Adjust the thermostat on refrigerators and freezers to the coolest possible temperature. If the power goes out, food, food will stay cooler longer. As you evacuate, take only essential items with you, including at least one week's supply of prescription medications. If you have time, turn off the gas, electricity, and water. Disconnect appliances to reduce the likelihood of electrical shock when power is restored. Make sure your automobile's emergency kit is ready. Follow designated evacuation routes. Others may be blocked and expect heavy traffic delays. If you are told to take shelter where you are, Keep listening to your radio or television until you are told all is safe or you are told to evacuate. Local authorities may evacuate specific areas at greatest risk in your community. Close and lock all windows and outside doors. Turn off all heating and air conditioning systems and fans. Close the fireplace damper. Organize your emergency supplies and make sure household members know where the supplies are. Make sure the radio is working. Go to an interior room without windows that is above ground level. Bring your pets with you and be sure to bring additional food and water supplies for them. 
it is ideal to have a hardwired non-portable telephone in the room you select. Call your emergency contact, a friend or family member who does not live near the volcano, and have that phone and have the phone available if you need to report a life-threatening condition. Remember that the telephone equipment may be overwhelmed or damaged during an emergency. <clears throat> in the end, you have got to do what you feel is best for you and your family. Personally, I would be extremely hesitant to live in a very high risk in very high risk areas along the west coast or near the Yellowstone supervolcano. This is especially true considering how dramatically global seismic activity is increasing. But others point to the fact that these danger areas have not seen any major events in decades so that they wonder what all of the fuss is about. All right, and and last but not least, spiritual preparation is um out of all of these things, the most important. All right, it's it's good to plan physically and to have all of these, you know, you know, have physical things in place, as we've you know definitely instructed those um, who um, are a part of uh, you know our body to make sure that they have you know weeks weeks supply of food, water in the event of any type of situation, any scenario. You don't want to be stuck in a in a um, a scenario where you're without. And you happen to go out to to, to scavenge and amongst the chaos, um, but in the end of the day, it's the spiritual preparation that's going to get us through um, these scenarios. Give us wisdom to know, um, you know, where to go, what to do. We know that the Holy Spirit will be our guide in the event when when things start to, to happen um, in any in any occasion. All right, so um, go to our last article here because a lot of people, again, think that, um, you know, all of this will continue to um, pass America by and that there's not really anything happening in America. But we've seen plagues on America for quite some time now. All right, this takes us to... Uh, let's see here. End of the American Dream dot com, and the name of the article is "Houston Flooding is the Eighth Historic Flood to Hit America Since the End of September, April Eighteenth, Twenty Sixteen." It says, "Why has the U.S. been hit by historic?" floods after a historic flood in recent months. The flooding that is pummeling the city of Houston is the eighth historic flood in this country since the end of September. City officials down in Houston have labeled the flooding that is currently spamming the city a life-threatening emergency, and they are insisting that Houston residents should avoid travel at all costs today. At this point, dozens of subdivisions have been flooded and major sections of I-10 and I-45 are underwater near downtown. Authorities are telling us that water is getting to areas that has never been that it has never been before. In fire department spokesman Jay Evans announced that the water is already 10 10 deep in some areas. But even though some parts of Houston have already gotten close to 20 inches of rain within the last 24 hours, there is more rain in the forecast, so the so this crisis is far from over. The giant storm that has caused all of this rain was a complete surprise to many residents of Houston. A lot of people woke up on Monday morning to discover that their neighbors now resembled Waterworld, that the neighborhoods now resem- resembled Waterworld. The following comes from the Chicago Tri- Tribune. More than a foot of rain fell Monday in parts of Houston, submerging scores of subdivisions and several major interstate highways, forcing the closure of schools and knocking out power to thousands of residents who were urged to shelter in place. Sylvester Turner, mayor of the nation's fourth largest city, told residents to stay home to fend off a weather system he called stubborn. More rain was projected over the next two to three days, although heavy downpours had subsided somewhat by midday and only another half inch was expected through Monday night, he said. 
if this flooding was just an isolated incident, it would it really wouldn't be that big of a deal. But the truth is that the flooding in Houston continues a very disturbing pattern that began in early October of last year. Since the end of September, the U.S. has been hit by eight historic floods, which works out to an average of more than one a month. For this article, I wanted to update a list of these historic floods. Previous article. All right. In October, you had Hurricane Joaquin never makes landfall, but it tracks up the east coast of the U.S., causing nightmarish rainfall and flooding all over the eastern seaboard. Things were particularly bad in South Carolina, where the governor declared that it was the worst rainfall that many areas of her state had seen in a thousand years. In October, you had violent storms in Southern California caused flash flooding that buried some highways and rivers of mud that were up to six feet deep. Hundreds of vehicles got buried in the fast-moving mud, and the lifeless body of one man that had, had his vehicle completely encased by several feet of mud was recovered only after a few days had passed because that is how long it took emergency workers to dig him out. October, you had Hurricane Patricia, with the second most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded in the entire world, and remnants from the storm caused absolutely horrible flooding in some parts of Texas. The floodwaters were moving so fast at one point that a freight train was actually knocked entirely off the tracks. November to December, a conveyor belt of violent storms barreled into coastal areas of Oregon and Washington, causing nightmarish flooding in many areas. The resulting landslides and floods made headlines all over the country, and it is going to be a long time before the region fully recovers. In early December, we witnessed the wettest day in the history of Portland, Oregon, and things were so were also extremely bad at the time up in the Seattle area. January. The middle part of the country experienced record-breaking flooding as the calendar rolled over from 2015 to 2016. The only thing that people could really compare it to was the Great Flood of 1993, and Missouri Governor Jay Nixon said that some communities saw floodwaters get to places they'd never been before. Normally, if the middle of the country is going to see flooding like this, it is going to take place when the snow begins to thaw in the spring. For something like this to happen in the middle of the winter was absolutely unprecedented. Right, and you see how all of these events, everything is unprecedented or of biblical proportions as something that has not been seen um, in a long time or ever before, and, and totally unexpected. <clears throat> also in January, on the 22nd, one of the worst East Coast blizzards in history slammed into D.C., New York City, and other major uh, metrop metropolitan areas. More than three feet of snow was dumped on some areas. Hundreds of thousands of people were left without power, and coastal cities all along the eastern seaboard experienced flooding that was described as worse than Hurricane Sandy. It is also interesting to note that this storm was known as Jonas, which is actually a Greek trans transliteration of the Hebrew name Jonah. Jonah, of course, was a Hebrew prophet that was sent to the capital city of Assyria in Nineveh to warn that the judgment of God was coming. Well, it turns out that this storm called Jonas also hit our capital city, Washington, D.C., on the exact anniversary of Roe v. Wade and in the exact location where Roe v. Wade was decided. March. Almost two feet of rain triggered historic flooding in parts of Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, flooding along one, of the, uh, flooding along one area of the Sabine River broke the previous record by more than five feet and some sections of I-10 were closed for four days. Never before has the U.S. experienced so many historic floods in such a compressed period of time. So why is this happening? Some believe that climate change is responsible for the bizarre weather patterns. Others are pointing the finger at El Nino, and yet others believe that this is a sign that we are approaching the last days described in the Bible. What everybody should be able to agree on is that we are witnessing what we are witnessing is highly, highly unusual. Historic floods have hit almost every region of the country since the end of September, and the economic damage that has been caused has been immense. Hopefully we will get a break from all this flooding soon, but I wouldn't count on it.
All right. So, um, so we see the, um, you know, all of these things happening, all these signs, and um, uh, just one moment here. I'm not sure if anybody else is able to hear me, but I'm getting some. Um, Reports in that I can't be heard. So um, let me see here. Let me check with some other people and make sure that I'm coming in before I finish up the end of segment one here. <clears throat> okay. All right. So um, I'm getting some reports that uh, I, I am a being able to be heard. So if somebody is not able to hear me, it is something on their end. All right. So, uh, so again, you know, we had the Supreme Court ruling last summer uh, of of legalizing sodomy and, and the sodomy laws. That those things continue to happen. You have this uh, this bathroom you know, bill situation happening where they are looking to, uh, you know, allow men to go in women's restrooms and women to go in men's restrooms, depending on what gender you feel like for the day, um, this controversy. So you're continuing to see this blasphemy and mocking in the face of the most high. Um, so it's no wonder that these events are happening to America. And just as ancient Egypt was hit with plagues, we know that modern Egypt modern Babylon, modern Sodom and Gomorrah will continue to be hit with plagues. And all the warning signs are there to show us where we're at and how serious it is. Unfortunately, our society does a good job of encompassing us and encapsulating all of us into a bubble to where as long as none of this is happening to us, we feel like everything is normal. We are only stuck into our own virtual world. And so then with all of this going on, people don't understand just how bad it really is. Everything seems normal. Buildings continue to be built. Homes are being built. Roads are being laid. Construction is continuing to go up. So everybody in this food on the shelves, they're not telling you this food and water is coming from other places being shipped in. One moment. So, um, so everybody thinks everything is normal, but when it happens, when 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 the events start to happen on a level that collapses things, it will be it will be too late to realize um, these things that your food is coming from other countries and that supply will be cut off, and if there's no food being grown locally then what will you have to eat? Especially when you have pandemonium and chaos ensuing, people will become vultures. People will become hyenas and, and scavengers. Um, all right, so just wanted to go over the natural disasters that are happening right now because they are happening on unpre unprecedented levels, uh, unprecedented proportions, um, and they will be a part of prophecy. Um, on, a, on a major level as we continue to go forward. So we need to continue to, you know, um, keep our eyes on these events and continue to stay in preparation mode, spiritually, physically, and mentally. Um, all right, so that is it for segment one. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go to segment two. We'll go, we'll go to the call lines. We will take your calls. Again, the guest caller number is 646-200-4309. Just press the number 1. If you have a comment or question, we come back, we will take calls. Again, Friday Night Sabbath, coming out of Babylon here on Blog Talk Radio. The Gathering of Christ Church will be right back.